Tom, what do you make of, the, of these drawdowns? They do seem to be um, regulation sort of provoked sell downs. I mean, actions from China, banning ICOs, shutting down Bitcoin exchanges by the end of the month, et cetera. Yeah, I think um, there's two factors. One is I think there is a liquidity effect because, you know, China exchanges are, you know, 30 percent of Bitcoin volume. So if you're going to give notes to shut those down, obviously there's going to be forced selling. I think that's what we're seeing. And, and as Seema pointed out, you know, there's been seven times we've seen a drawdown of this magnitude. Uh, this, you know, in 2015, Bitcoin was 183. Now it's 4,000. So you still had to buy all those pullbacks. But the second part has obviously been, you know, a lot of folks talking about Bitcoin being a bubble or a fraudulent currency. Uh, I think you need to be on the other side of that uh, very strongly. But why? Well, for instance, you know, number one, Bitcoin is not as widely held as people think. You know, if, if you look at, so we have some data. There's only about 300,000 holders of at least $5,000 of Bitcoin. So think about that. That's like saying the iPhone was a bubble in 2007, four days into the sale, because there were 500,000 iPhones sold. I mean, it's not that many holders of Bitcoin. You know, when you think about how many wallets there are today that hold $5,000, it's, it's huge. So I think it's still very early stages. And I think it makes sense for Bitcoin. Why isn't that not a negative, though? Why isn't it that? I agree with that. That would have been my pet. It, it, Less hands makes it around. Exactly. more, so more speculative, adoption. more volatile, more bubbly, yeah. more like well, tulips. Well, what you have to remember is Bitcoin is a fat protocol. So that's what makes this different than other technologies, meaning the actual network itself is generating the value so that the visa of Bitcoin isn't going to be as valuable as, as the blockchain network itself. And that's why, you know, for instance, to make a fraudulent transaction on Bitcoin today, you know, it would cost almost $30 billion to create one fake Bitcoin. So it's a very secure, trusted network because of the nature of blockchain. So I think it can be very threatening to financial institutions to see that, hey, trust is uh, created within a network and a distributed network. By the way, from a generational perspective, I think people under the age 30 think that makes perfect sense. I think right. it's just sort of not the norm today. So uh, where should Bitcoin trade? What's it worth? What's it worth in a year, in two years, in three years? Well, I think that the best framework still, and it's not imp worth it to try to look at Bitcoin as two months, two weeks ahead or whatever, is to think of it as a store value. So the way people in the 80s treated gold as the store value because they never trusted dollars, I think another generation of people think of Bitcoin and the blockchain it embeds is the store value. If it's 5% of gold in five years, it's 25,000 per unit. 25,000 in five years. And yes, and it's you know 3,300 today. So I will ask you this question again, because it's one month later. What is your best bet for the rest of this year, Bitcoin or U.S. stocks? Again, it's, it's easy to say it's going to be Bitcoin, but there is volatility. But I would say Bitcoin is certainly higher than it is today. It sounds like you're backing down from that prediction back in August. No, I, I am not. I just, uh, I unequivocally believe Bitcoin is your best investment into the end of the year. Unequivocally. Yes. All right. Tom, thank you. Thank you. Tom Lee. So my pushback, and this is sort of a rephrasing of Tim's question, how can it be a way to conduct commerce and still have the volatility that it has? It's either, it's either a currency in which you conduct commerce or it's a speculative tool. U.S. dollar doesn't move 5, but 10, 15 percent. it's much more widely percent. held. I understand that. But at, a certain, but at a certain US point, I think it has to, you know, what is it? Sure. And what I don't is, know. Yeah. What, what is backing Bitcoin? In other words, we know what's backing U.S. dollar. Right. So, so well, you can say what's backing gold, a, a, you know, a cold metal. But I think to Tom's uh, point about the fewer number of wallets as at the moment being a negative, as we see Bitcoin accepted more and more places, you're going to have more and more wallets that will own Bitcoin. I, I think the easiest way for a layperson to play this is Overstock accepts Bitcoin, AMD, semiconductors, uh, uh, NVIDIA. Those are the ways to play it that is much more safe than actually buying Bitcoin for me.